Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Al, and I have a Parasect time lapse for you, as well as a voiceover inside a ZBrush Core Mini. Before we get there, if you'd like to support this channel, check out my game Centroid, linked in the description below. All right, this is going to be a fun one. This is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Today we're gonna we're gonna sculpt Parasect. Super awesome concept. My sculpt does not do it justice. The artist is linked in the description below. Insanely good art. So this sculpt doesn't even touch the surface of how great that was. But it was a lot of fun nonetheless. So I don't know about you, but I have some really fond memories of Pokemon. So I got into Pokemon when I was in fourth grade. That's like pretty much when it came out. And I remember just scrounging the house for quarters, money in the, the dryer and the couch cushions, just anywhere I could find it ask for it for birthdays just i needed pokemon cards try to collect them all right it was so much fun and then playing the video game on the original game boy oh my goodness it's so much fun just to think about so it was a great opportunity for me to sculpt parasect some people ask me why in the world would you use zbrush core mini if you know you have access to blender or if you have access to zbrush and it's an interesting thought i've asked myself this question many times there's a couple couple reasons if we're thinking in terms of design it's very minimal it is i wouldn't even say it's a watered down version of zbrush because it's so watered down it is so different and it is incredibly watered down but if you're designing something sometimes a minimalistic approach really can be beneficial for many different reasons whether it's a computer chair or a car just anything right sometimes these minimalistic ideas are beneficial so in this case when i'm on my lunch break at work i can just load up zebra's core mini and just go to town it still feels better to me than blender sculpting so i typically sculpt on a mac and core mini is much more responsive it's just better it's i don't know it's not bogged down sculpting wise now you can do far more in blender and far more in zbrush but with as many limitations as there are in core mini it really forces me to make some specific design choices with the with this character so yeah i can't use like insert mesh brushes i can't even add other objects in core mini so i started from a sphere and i ended with what is parasect that's just stretched out from a sphere. So some of the challenging parts of this were the mushrooms. Mushrooms were probably the toughest. So I used clay buildup just to hit the shape of a mushroom to pull that out and then kind of slowly pinch it down. That would have been far easier in Blender and even more so inside a ZBrush. But still, it's the idea of this minimalistic approach. My mind isn't bogged down with all the things I can do with Blender or ZBrush and I can just sculpt. It's kind of a challenge for myself to see how far I can push ZBrush Core Mini. And it helps me think outside the box to tackle some of these design issues uh, in my sculpts. So when all of this was said and done, I exported to ZBrush. It's just easier to smooth in ZBrush. I did, didn't do any sculpting in ZBrush, just smoothing out some of the polygons and reprojecting details, but no sculpting in ZBrush, just Core Mini. From ZBrush, I went to Keyshot, and from there it's just a simple backdrop with a HDRI. Should I do more of these quick little Pokemon sculpts? Do you find this useful? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So linked above is the ZBrush Core Mini Pro tip. I use it non-stop when I'm in Core Mini and I am struggling with those details. So if you are in Core Mini and you don't know how to add those super fine details or it just seems like it's not working right or sculpting correctly, Go check out that video. I promise it's going to help you with details and core mini. So as you can tell, uh, I have strayed away from the concept a little bit. Remember, the bottom right image is not concept. That is going to be exactly the same as this sculpt because that's the finished render. I strayed away from the concept. Uh, my legs, the back legs are a little more like spider legs or something, but I like it. It works. Same thing. I added different mushrooms on top. I think it's a little better in some ways, a little worse for sure. Definitely did not meet the concept art. But you know, you have to think of the end product in mind. I knew that I wanted this sculpt to be just that, just a sculpt that I can take into Keyshot and render, do a turntable, because I want to put it on my YouTube channel, right? If you were working for a company and they say, please design this character, here's the concept art, unless you are also like a concept sculptor and you're just playing with ideas, but you have to know your end product in mind. Always keep that in mind. So do me a favor, please. Go back to the one minute mark and just pause it. Take a look and I want you to just look how terrible this looks. Okay, in the bottom right, we can see the end result that I finally got there. 
But at this stage, if I told myself, oh, this looks like crap, because it does, it did look like crap at the one minute mark. If I just stopped right there, I would never finish. So in your sculpts, when you get to this stage, it's like, oh my gosh, it kind of looks like it, but it really sucks. I challenge you just to keep pushing, refining those primary forms, and then slowly diving into the secondary and tertiary forms to push through. It's the valley of the suck. I know you can do it. Push through, you're gonna get there. Well, once again, we come to an end. Thank you so much for checking out my video. If you feel that I earned it, I would love it if you comment below, hit the like button, press subscribe, but only if I earned it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.